is happy. Well, he's adjusting. He didn't really want to be open. Yes. Good morning, everyone. We're going to have a little a pre-announcement announcement about some music we're singing today. So during communion, like we did last week, we are going to have a piece of music from the Tizay community. 
If you turn to page 17, you will see the music there. And I'd like to just uh, introduce it to you and we can sing it together. It is a little bit, when, when I first saw this, a little bit disorienting. And then it becomes very familiar and it will rest in your heart and you'll see the words go with that. So let's, we'll sing the Latin. And if you know Latin or Spanish, you'll see it makes sense. So the first it's da pacem cordium. The word da, which sounds like the Spanish dar means give. Pacem is like pas or peace. Cordium is corazon uh, or heart. So it says, give peace to every heart. And we'll basically sing that repetitively. So let's see, Marcia, can you give me the first note? Mm -hmm. so it goes like this. Da pacem cordium, da pacem cordium, da pa. Try to sing that together, okay? Uh, Marcia, can you give us the note again? Okay, one, two, three. Da pacem cordium, da pacem cordium, da good and we'll get a chance to sing it over and over again and when we when the, we return to this maybe in another Sunday we can actually have rounds like one side starts and the other but it is um, anyway it's uh, um, going to be part of our communion so we'll have Ryan Valdivia who's here playing a, a trumpet piece as the first part of communion music and then when he is through then we'll turn to the da pacem for you and I'm going to welcome people on zoom and So here's another uh, good morning and welcome to everyone. Um, for those on Zoom, we were rehearsing the Da Pacem Cordium Tizay music for communion. Uh, today is the um, last Sunday after Pentecost. We've been in the post-Pentecostal season now for months and it has actually come to an end today. And we call it Christ the King. And you'll be hearing a little bit more about that in the sermon. But my name is George Smith and I serve as the rector of St. Mark's and I'm just thrilled that we are gathering together as the community here in person on Zoom and I believe is YouTube working, Laura? Yes. It I, is indeed, yes it is. I'm yes, sorry, I was we'll muted. <laughs> have people joining us on YouTube. So for however you are joining us, a warm welcome. And just a moment, uh, you will hear the bell ring and we will stand to sing our opening hymn. That hymn is in your bulletin. It's um, on page four, crown him with many crowns. Thank you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite those in person to be seated for the first lesson. A reading from the book of Samuel. These are the last words of David. The oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken, the rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsively by whole verse. Lord, remember David and all the hardships he endured. I will not come under the roof of my house, nor climb up into my bed. Until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. Yeah. 
Let us go to God's dwelling place. Let us fall upon our knees before his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. Let your faithful people sing with joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn an oath to David. In truth, he will not break it. A son, the fruit of your body, will I set upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children will sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired her for his habitation. This shall be my resting place forever. Here will I dwell, for I delight in her. I will surely bless her provisions and satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her faithful people will rejoice and sing. There will I make the horn of David flourish. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. As for his enemies, I will clothe them with shame. But as for him, his crown will shine. A reading from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now those in person, let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Ghost for the Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Pilate entered in the headquarters again, to so Moses Jesus, and asking him, You are nation of from being handed over to Jews. But it is it my kingdom is not from here. Jesus answered. You say that I am king, but I to testify everyone who belongs to the true listen listen to my voice. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated for the presentation of the godly play, which you can see on the screen. The Jewish leaders took Jesus to the headquarters of the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. They left him there for Pontius Pilate to judge him. Pilate went and called for Jesus to be brought to him.
When Jesus appeared before Pilate, he asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Is this your own question? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate was confused. Am I a Jew? Pilate asked. Your own people and their leading priests brought you here. Why? What have you done? Then Jesus answered, I am not an earthly king. If I were, my followers would have fought when I was arrested by the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, your kingdom? So you are a king then. Jesus said, you say that I am a king. And you are right. I was born for that purpose, and I came to bring truth to the world. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. I wonder how Pilate felt. When Jesus asked him if it was his own question that he was king of the Jews or if it was something others had said about him. I wonder what Jesus meant when he said his kingdom is not of this world. I wonder how Pilate felt when Jesus said, I came to bring truth to the world and all who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. I wonder if we ever let the words of others tell us what we believe to be the truth and how we could do better to find the real truth Jesus wants us to recognize. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, good morning. Today is Christ the King Sunday when we come to the end of a liturgical year with the reading of a passage from John's Gospel of Jesus being interrogated by Pontius Pilate. Now the lectionary unfortunately omits, and Godly Play does this too, the very end of the scene, which is a question asked by Pilate. What is truth? What is truth, asks Pilate. This year-long journey that began last year with Advent and then continued into Christmas and Lent, Easter, and six months of, of post-Pentecostal ministry of Jesus seems to conclude with an existential whimper. Pilate just looks up with a question. But with the Marquis, Christ the King, we might expect fireworks and streamers, and to see Jesus on a sedan chair being processed through adoring and faithful crowds. But instead, we find Jesus being mockingly interrogated 
by a second-rate governor of an outlying province of the Roman Empire. Well, don't blame the lectionary. It's only being faithful to the paradox of the gospel, which, is, which instead of jubilant triumph leaves, leaves us with deep abiding questions about our true values, loyalties, motives, and beliefs, and with a question, what is truth? The American philosopher and poet Henry David Thoreau said, rather than love, rather than money, rather than fame, give me truth. Like Pilate and Thoreau, we want truth. And what it is and who has the truth is really today at the very center of our country's political and social divisions. And now with Thanksgiving just a few days from now, divided families will be facing off over any number of hot button topics as plates are loaded with turkey and mashed potatoes. Now here at St. Mark's, we don't screen out or deny the controversies and hot button issues of the society around us. They are welcome to come right in those front doors of the church building along with all of you, because you have them. And so as they come in, we confront and process those things that make up our lives, things like the pandemic, and whether or not to get vaccinated. Things like mental illness and suicide, racism and discrimination, transphobia, the, the outcome of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, and then those three-letter acronyms like CRT and BLM. Now, as a community who follows Jesus, we are called not just to name these things and talk about them, but to engage in them in a certain way, in the light of the gospel and the tenets of our baptismal covenant, measuring and considering them always against the greatest commandment, to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Now, I think church can be a shelter from the storm, but it is not an escape. It is where we collect our prayers and thoughts so that we may engage in the difficult things of our lives and this world with renewed faith and conviction. So let us take, for example, BLM, which stands for Black Lives Matter. But before we get into that, let me ask you a question. How many of you were taught as children about the Mayflower? Raise your hand if you learned about the Mayflower in school. Miguel, did you learn about the Mayflower? He, and he was in Mexico. Wait, did, did Joanne, did you learn about the Mayflower? Yeah, but I was in Downers Grove. You were in Downers Grove. <laughs> now that gives me comfort. No, Downers Grove. But here's the question. Oh, and there was uh, this morning at the 8 o'clock service, we had um, a guest musician who's from Korea, and she did not learn about the Mayflower as a child. But how many of you know about a ship that arrived the year before in 1619 called the White Lion? Who knows about that? All right, so maybe four of you. This was a ship that arrived in the Jamestown area with 30 enslaved Africans. But who knows about that? Very few of us. Black Lives Matter came rushing into this church community, not really into the building since no one was here 18 months ago, but on Zoom and into the lives of our gathered community as we were at the time. And with deliberation, prayer, vestry discussions, and more, one of the responses was a physical one. The words Black Lives Matter were painted on a large piece of plywood attached to posts and planted in the dirt outside of the library windows facing Main Street. The reaction to the sign was swift, and it continues to this day. Some really like and support the sign, and others hate it. They hate it. People who are African-American residents of Glen Ellen have told us that having the sign there has been very meaningful, 
one of support, one of friendship. Now that community is not uh, homogenous. There are African American people who don't like that sign. And but I've had to tell people, uh, I've, I've had I've had people tell me that by putting up the sign, St. Mark's is showing support for a Marxist organization that is against the family, the church, and promotes looting and violence. How can you have such a sign in front of a church? I've had people tell me, and maybe some of you, I don't know. And I've lost count of the times that people have asked me, why don't we have a sign that says all lives matter? Why don't you have that sign out there? A week ago when I was walking on the sidewalk near the sign, actually with another pastor who has a Black Lives Matter sign in front of his church, it's not in Glen Ellen, it's in Wheaton, the driver of a large pickup sped by, rolled down his window, and yelled obscenities and something about being a race baiting dot dot dot, and then sped off. On Christ the King Sunday, we have before us the question, what is truth? So, I think we can agree that the Black Lives Matter sign evokes strong emotions. Let's agree with that. But I can say without any doubt that the sign was created by a member of this community and did not, it was not ordered from the Black Lives Matter organization. And that as St. Mark's as a community does not send outreach funds to the Black Lives Matter organization. Now, some of you might, but I don't know, and that's up to you, but St. Mark's doesn't send money to that organization. I can also say that if you go to the Black Lives Matter website and read what it says about itself, its history and its mission, there is no mention of Marxism or any kind of agenda destroying nuclear families. But I know that you can find other websites and news sources that talk about the Black Lives Matter site, which makes claims about it that it doesn't make for itself. Learning about what people think and they feel and doing good research are part, of course, of a responsible and mature engagement with important and controversial issues. But by doing those things, talking to people and doing good research, can we really have the truth as Thoreau eloquently petitioned? So let's fast forward from Thoreau at Walden to 2021 Los Angeles and this current day wisdom that comes from, of all places, the script of that popular CBS TV drama, NCIS. NCIS, that stands for Naval Criminal Investigative Services. It's a popular show, it's been on for years now. There's a character, Admiral Kilbride, who rebukes one of the undercover operatives with this one-liner. It doesn't matter what people believe is to be true, it matters what is true. Let me say that again, it doesn't matter what people believe is to be true, it matters what is true. So I don't like to disagree with TV admirals or any admirals, but yes, uh, Admiral, it does matter what people believe to be true. It does matter because they speak and act on those beliefs, sometimes causing great harm and destruction. It does matter. But I also agree with the Admiral that what is true does matter. Is the Black Lives Matter organization Marxist? Does what is true matter or what people believe to be true? At the end of the day, as followers of Jesus, we don't want to be barking up the wrong tree. The question that Pilate asks is, what is truth? Is a question, and it's actually a pursuit of the Roman Empire and of every earthly kingdom and organization. What is true? But the kingdom of Jesus, unlike the Roman Empire, Unlike our nation, the kingdom of Jesus is not of this world, where truth is not an it, but a way of life. And Jesus says this to Pilate, I came to testify to the truth. Well, Pilate doesn't understand this because he doesn't know Jesus. For Pilate, Jesus is just another Jewish troublemaker for him to deal with. Pilate doesn't know anything about Jesus' healing, 
his feeding, and his singular concern for the poor and the outcast. But we know about that because we follow Jesus and we work to orient our lives and actions in the direction of compassion and of knowing full well that by doing so, we will very likely be attacked and scorned and yelled at, even at times by other followers of Jesus who have lost their orientation. The gospel truth is not an it, an object to be given or possessed or to hold as much as we would like it to be in our consumption-oriented society. Jesus says that as followers who listen to him, we belong, we belong to the truth. The understanding of truth not as an object or something to own, but as a way of life was not invented by Jesus. This is the wisdom that comes from the ancient Hebrew people, which we find in the songs of Israel. Psalm 25 begins, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. And it continues, lead me in your truth and teach me. Like the kingdom of God, truth is something that we find is close at hand and that we enter into. It isn't something that we build. It is something that we enter into. And then from Proverbs, which our bishop-elect, Paula Clark, quoted in a letter yesterday at diocesan convention, it says this. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In this light, how are we to consider the issues of our times, like discrimination and racism and powerful statements like Black Lives Matter? Although important, search for and finding correct information is simply not enough. It must be evaluated and examined in the light of the gospel and how it does and doesn't belong to the truth that Jesus reveals and points us toward. We never really have complete information on any issue or difficult topic, and our work is to recognize our desire to own the truth, but then to free that desire from our grasp. This is a way of being and relating that is always being renewed and strengthened in the Christian community and a way that we can take into our homes as we gather for family meals during the holidays ahead, as we engage in the difficult topics of things like CRT and BLM, whether somebody should be vaccinated or not, and whether cranberry is an acceptable side dish. <laughs> there is a good quote from Soren Kierkegaard who sought, he was the Danish philosopher who sought after God, not through doctrine, but by trust, which I think was orienting his life to God. He said, truth always rests with the minority, and the minority is always stronger than the majority, because the minority is generally formed by those who really have an opinion, while the strength of a majority is illusory, formed by the gangs who have no opinion. And who therefore in the next instant, when it is evident that the minority is stronger, assume its position. And then while truth again reverts to a new minority. So in keeping with the gospel on this Christ the King Sunday, I offer you these questions to all of us. How do you understand truth, considering your Christian witness? And how do you express the truth of God with your life? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> the prayers of the people can be found on page 11 of your bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for those who are ill with COVID-19 or any other illness that separates them from their loved ones. We pray for those who have died, especially Catherine Phillips and Ray Croy, brother of Gary Croy and Bob Gonzalez, father of Mike Gonzalez. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite you to name names out loud or silently in your hearts. I ask you to pray for Joe, for Gloria, for Diane, Craig, Almighty God, accept these prayers of your people. Strengthen us to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now I invite you to kneel or to be seated for the confession. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us stand for the sharing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. 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 Peace to all. Peace, everyone. Peace to the Lord, peace. everyone. Peace. 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 Nancy, Peace. hey! Hi, Nancy. How you doing? Peace, people on Zoom. Peace, Peace. George. Peace. Shout it out. Peace. 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 The Lord. Gotta Peace. love all the elbow bumping. This is awesome. Peace. Peace. Peace, Karen. Peace. Peace, Laura.
Peace. Well, I invite those in person to be seated. It's wonderful hearing shouts of peace from those on Zoom. Thank you for being with us. We had a lot of our readers uh, on Zoom this morning, and it works so beautifully. Um, and I'm glad that we have this uh, ability to, to be a community that uh, is really without walls. We have several announcements this morning, and Laura Waterman, who is our Zoom host, is going to lead us in those. So first of all, thank you to all of those who uh, participated in the readings, Tim and Alicia Fouad. Um, Lindsay Paris Lopez was well, Ben not. morning. And uh, Allison Nurkis is our acolyte. Allison, thank you. And Lynn and David Dornblazer. Actually, David's not here, but Lynn is helping us with our video and sound. Thank you. Now is the time to make your pledge for St. Mark's for 2022. You can see in your bulletin there's information about the pledge campaign. We have many exciting plans for 2022, and with your support and your generosity, we can achieve those. Um, many people have turned in their pledges, thank you. Um, but I think we have about 100 families who pledged last year who haven't gotten around to it. Now that is not unusual for St. Mark's, unfortunately. We'd love them to all turn it in quickly, but we are going to have a text-a-thon, phone a -phone on November 30th to call all of the households and say, please uh, make your pledge, we, we need you. So, um, but we won't call you if you make your pledge <laughs> before November 30th. So if you, haven't, if you just haven't gotten around to it, it's really, really easy. You can, there's actually a thing in the bulletin you could cut out and fill it in and put it in the plate, or you can use the QR code or go to the website. It really takes about um, logistically 30 seconds, but that's not the hard part. The hard part is discerning what it is that you plan to, how much you plan to support the church with financially, and that's a very careful uh, thing to think about. So yes, take some time to do that, but the logistics part is, is very easy. So on to the next announcement. We are continuing with a wonderful uh, adult formation series called Where is the Love and Who is My Neighbor? This morning, we had Jay Whitaker from the Lem uh, Mennonite Peace Center in Lombard with us for a great conversation. And um, next week, uh, Rabbi Baab is going to be with us. No, it's Maria Torres is going to be with us. And she's going to be talking about the festival of the Guadalupe that's coming up. And is that, is it Rabbi Bob? I, I'm confused. I think we might have our speakers confused. Pardon me? Okay, and Rabbi Bob is coming December 5th. So anyway, come next week and we are going to hear about this important celebration, uh, especially for um, those who have origins in Mexico, about celebrating the appearance of the Virgin Mary to Juan Diego and in the place of Guadalupe. So we call it the Festival of the Guadalupe learning about that. We have a blood drive today in Man Hall from 3 to 8 p.m. And as Joanne reminds us, is there is a blood shortage. It's quite severe. And so your gift of, of, of donating this afternoon will um, give life to other people. And uh, that will be easily accessible in our parish hall uh, this afternoon. We are having a Thanksgiving Day service uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, we have uh, the Carey family will be playing a cello quartet as part of that. We have one of our own parishioners, um, Josh O'Shea, will be offering the homily. And I know that, uh, and I say this every year, and I learned it from another priest, which is true, a true thing. The turkey tastes better if you go to church on Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is, at least it's my experience. Anyway, so you're all welcome. And we'll have that also on Zoom as well. COVID vaccination clinic is a week from today, from four to six. And this is a clinic where you, a child who is age five or older can get the vaccine. People can get their boosters. People can also get uh, their first uh, vaccine. So that's available. And if you're all vaccinated, you know, I have had four things. I've had my two vaccines plus a booster plus the flu shot. But there are some of those, you have not been able to get a booster or even your first vaccination we are making that possible here next Sunday. A wreath-making class 
Um, do you want to come and say a word about that, Kirsten? Okay, come on up here. Kirsten Deneen is on her way up here. And uh, go ahead, Kirsten. Hi, everybody. My name is Kirsten Deneen. Uh, we are hosting a fundraiser for St. Mark's Preschool. Um, I haven't had the joy of watching the kiddos until this year when my own little boys are in the program. And it is incredible. It's building a wonderful foundation for our little ones. And we want to do everything we can to support them. Um, they're also trying to make a more permanent uh, landscape for the outdoor classrooms, which will really support the learning. And so we are teaching a wreath making class. They won't be your average grocery store wreaths. They'll be really special and all locally sourced material. So no supply chain issues. We're asking for a donation of $25 to join the class. And it will be held Saturday, December 4th at 930 here in Man Hall. So please send an email uh, to preschool at St. Mark's um, if you can join us so we make sure we have enough materials. Thank you. And we have, uh, with um, Advent coming up next week, we also have St. Nicholas coming to St. Mark's on Sunday, December 5th. And so he will be here. I think he's going to make an appearance at the worship service and then be able to be with us at coffee hour afterward. So we're looking forward to that. And we have an Advent bread baking retreat coming up on uh, December 11th. And you can see it, there's a sign up link or how to do that in your bulletin. You can also go to the website under uh, latest news and there are the links that you can click on there to sign up for it. And the Christmas pageant is coming up and we are having rehearsals to learn the music and to prepare for that. So that's in your bulletin as well. And we've got two more announcements that aren't in the PowerPoint. So Libby, do you wanna come up? And then Patty, why don't you both come up? You're together, okay, great. Hi, I'm Libby Wasif I'm with Patty. Hi, I'm Patty King. Um, and we just wanted to make an announcement about the Women's Group Annual Ornament Exchange, which is going to be on December 8th this year, so the week after Thanksgiving. The Women's Group normally meets the first Wednesday of the month, but this week, this month it will be the second Wednesday, December 8th. We're gonna meet in Man Hall this year at 6.30, and all the women should bring an ornament, wrapped ornament valued at $10 or less, and we'll, it's always a really fun time to, to do the ornament exchange and also asking you to bring um, a dish to share. So it should be a nice uh, start to the holidays. Thank you, um, Libby and Patty. I always like to say that's December 8th, Wednesday at 6.30 and all the women of St. Mark's and their friends too are invited. That's great, wonderful, thank you. Well, that's the um, end of our announcements, and that we, there was a slide about wearing masks, so I, I see everybody is doing that so beautifully. Thank you, thank you. We are going to continue to, to, to um, wear masks here until the coast is clear, so we don't know when that's going to be, uh, but by wearing masks, we're caring for each other, we're caring for those who can't be vaccinated, and um, at making, us, uh, making our, our world a healthier place, so thank you. And now uh, we are going to prepare the altar for Thanksgiving. Everybody is welcome to come forward. We'll have a, a single line where you'll receive the bread and then the wine will be just poured into Dixie cups for you. And uh, if you'd like to receive a blessing and not this, the uh, bread and the wine, just take your hands and, and f cross them over your chest to show that preference. And now let us walk in love as Christ loves us and leads us into the truth.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. We invite you to stand as we continue on page 14. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Person may be seated, kneel, or remain standing if you prefer. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And now for those who are with us on Zoom, I invite you to take your bread and your wine, representations of this sacrament, to say the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, and the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. For those in person, please follow the choir's lead, forming a single line to come and to receive the sacrament.
Before we pray the post-communion prayer, I'd like to pray a special blessing on one of us who is celebrating a birthday today. We have Fran Baylor. Would you please stand? Fran? Today is your birthday, and uh, we will celebrate that with a prayer. If everybody would stand. And since we are into social distancing, we'll just keep our arms out. And, and But I'm going to put my hand on her shoulder as we pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask your blessing upon your servant Fran this day as she celebrates life and a birthday with her church family and her immediate family and all those who love and care for her. Bless her with health and strength and goodness as we go into these holidays with peace and love and truth in her heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congratulations. Now the post-communion prayer is found on page 17. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power.